Did you know that you can run an N64 rumble pack without batteries? Rumble packs were transformative to me back in 1997 when they came with Star Fox 64, and I have just been a big fan of Rumble ever since. But the thing that always bugged me the most about them is that they needed AAA batteries to function. I couldn't quite fathom why they didn't run from the controller itself, and then after the Dreamcast came out with removable jump packs and they ran from the controller, it made me even more upset. But, you know, the modding scene, being what it is, discovered a method a long time ago for being able to run Rumble Packs directly from an N64 controller port without the use of AAA batteries. And I've been using that method ever since. It's changed a little bit over the last few years, and I want to show you just one of the simplest mods you could do to an N64 Rumble Pack to make it battery free. Now, as with all mods, you take the risk of damaging your hardware if you don't know how to do proper soldering. So you do this mod at your own risk. And before we begin, it is worth noting that you will not want to do this mod on more than two rumble packs. All the documentation I've been able to find and sources have said doing this on more than two rumble packs has the potential of shorting out your N64 power supply. If that is no longer the case, I was not able to find any info on it, and I, for one, am not willing to test it. I don't really use more than two controllers at a time these days anyway, so two is perfectly good for me, and on those rare occasions where I do need four, you know, two pairs of AAA batteries are a lot better than four pairs of AAA batteries, so... Anyway. Please understand your risks before diving in, but let's go ahead and continue. So to begin our modding process, we are going to need, of course, a rumble pack. This could be a US Japanese PAL version. Don't think it should matter a whole lot. Some wire to hook up our two points with. Wire strippers, solder, flux, a 3.8 millimeter game bit for opening up our rumble pack, and then of course a soldering iron, and then I have my tip cleaner here. Now to disassemble the rumble pack, we just need to use our 3.8 millimeter game bit and take out the two game bit screws that are near the connector port up here. And once those screws are removed, we just have to pull it back and take out the two little hooks in the back and there we go, our rumble pack is now disassembled. So previous methods of this mod would have you desolder this resistor here and bridge it across a couple of points. We're going to be using a different method. We're actually going to be running a wire from the positive battery terminal to this point right here underneath the E and N, just the first one that is right here. And this is the method that is used in official Nintendo demo kiosks that included rumble packs. So this is an official type method to be honest, but anyway. Because of this, we don't even need to disassemble the rumble pack further than this. We have access to everything we need, so as long as you're careful, you won't really need to take it out. But now we're just going to take a wire and measure it out the length that we need for this mod. So we're just going to kind of hold it above that point there. Give it just a hair of slack to run it to the point right here, like so. So I'm just going to measure that out with my finger. So since my soldering skills I don't consider to be the greatest, I give myself a little bit more slack than a lot of people do. Not enough to cause problems, but... So there we go, there's my length of cable I'm going to be using for this mod. And again, this mod is very simple. All you have to do is solder two points. Great starter mod. But now we're just going to strip the ends. So on the battery terminal side you can strip it out a bit more since you have more to work with. There we go. Let's twist the ends together here. Now we're going to use the soldering paste to pre-tin both sides of our wire to make it easier to solder. Alright, so we're just going to dip it all up in this paste here. Excellent, so there we go. It's got a nice layer on it. And then the same thing to the other side. Awesome. I'm just going to set that down for a sec. Alright, so I'm using just this cheapo soldering iron that I got off of Amazon. Have it set to about 325 degrees Celsius. There we go, so just put some solder on the tip. 
and then run your wire that you put flux on through that to get it pretinned. And then same thing for the other side. All right, there we go. Excellent. All right, so now I'm going to use just a Q-tip to put a bit of soldering paste just on this point here where I want to solder in the wire. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit right here and we're gonna pretend this point. You can put some on the positive lead or positive lead if you want to as well. Don't really need to, but anyway. A little bit of fresh solder on that. And now we will just go ahead and put this on that via. And there we go. So it'll look something like that. So that way you just have some solder that's ready to accept a wire for you, make your life easier. And now we will connect our wire to the two points to complete the mod. So we'll just kind of just put the wire in position here and then shove it down with our iron. Since there's a ton of existing solder already on this pad, and there we go. Nice and complete. Now we'll get this side, line it up with our via that we pretend. Hard doing this through a camera, sorry. All right, so there we go. Like that. And then tack it down just like that and then if you want you could come in and add more solder just to make it have a more sturdy connection so there we go mod now complete all right now we could just begin reassembling our Rumble pack. So just make sure that the wires don't get caught as you rehook the back side of the rumble pack. There we go. And now just refit the 3.8 millimeter game bit screws. And make sure to turn counterclockwise first till you hear the click and then tighten them down so you don't strip the, the posts in there that are holding the screws in place. And there we go, the mod is now complete. We can throw this into a controller for testing. And we're gonna do that right now. All right, so here we are loaded up into Star Fox 64, a good little test game. We have our newly battery modded rumble pack. As you can see, there's no batteries in this guy. So we're just gonna unpause the game and give it a quick test. So here we go. So, as you can hear, it is delivering us a rumble experience that we would hope for. So, we have confirmed that this battery-free rumble pack mod is now working 100% according to what we want to see. Now one last optional step, you can label the rumble pack to better tell at a glance which one is battery modded, so I just put battery mod on the side of mine. And that lets me know this is a battery free rumble pack without having to do any experimentation. Of course you could just do this with something else besides Sharpie, but honestly Magic Eraser will clear that right up, so I really don't care. All right, so there we have it, a battery-free N64 rumble pack ready to be used on our original hardware and PC emulation if you're using something like a RafNet adapter. Works on both. So again, this does work on both 
Japanese and U.S. Rumble packs. Uh, no reason it shouldn't work on PAL. I just don't have a PAL one to test. But again, very simple mod and one that will just make your wallet a lot happier not having to buy AAA batteries. Or if you're using rechargeables, not having to charge them up. So, very effective. Doesn't really come with many negatives using this method. The rumble strength is still really good. Unlike the resistor method where I feel like the rumble strength was lacking, these ones feel pretty dang strong. So, I really like this method. But, anyway... Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your rumble packs running battery free to your heart's content. But here at the end, do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like this video, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos come live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing you all of this content. So big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going for so long. You are truly amazing. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, y'all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.